I'm back <laughs> with Moxie this time. I had plans to try and do sister location for spooky month, but I already had Moxie done. And at the time of writing this, I still don't have my charger to sketch them. So yeah, we're doing Moxie, which wow, I really wasn't expecting to do because similar to Blitz, I didn't really mind him or his design because it made some sense. But again, season two has made so many parts of his design and character make no sense. <laughs> His design, I guess, is still fine-ish. I mean, he kinda always had the same issue as Millie of not dressing the part, but I mean, unlike Millie, who's more, I guess, perfect for this job, while Moxie isn't. So that's why I understand why Moxie's outfit is so fancy and hints to his love of music, since he looks like a conductor, which all really makes sense. I mean, even though he loves guns, he doesn't really need to dress like an assassin. That's like not his core personality like it is for Millie and Blitz, but season two has kind of made me rethink that due to his past now being connected to the mafia and the fact we see him wearing the same outfit he always wears in the flashbacks. So it's like, where is his mafia suit? I doubt Crimson would have let him wear that. But besides that, his now outfit is pretty much fine. I mean, all that bugs me personally is that his shirt collar doesn't match his shirt. Like, why is it black? Uh, but anyway, his jacket is fine or I think it's a jacket. There's no lapel. Uh, the cuffs again, wrong color. I know it's supposed to give an undershirt look, but it looks wrong to me for some reason. And the fabric underneath his coat. Uh, my only issue is I wish it was a different color. Like the white is so white is weird. White is very weird. And to have it as the underside fabric is kind of weird, especially for a suit. Normally the inside of your suit might be a lighter color depending on what fabric is being used on the inside. But yeah, normally the inside of your suit wouldn't be two different colors. <laughs> uh, and finally Moxie's pants, shoe thingies. I know it makes it easier to animate because they don't need to add lines, but I really wish there was some kind of separation. I, know, I mean, I know it's not skin because of Moxie's pinup stand, but you know, would really love it if Moxie had actual shoes. Two more things and then we'll move on to his personality. So this is more a me thing and something I've noticed for a while is the lack of hairstyles and diversity among the main cast. The background characters are doing fine but after learning about Moxie's mom and seeing her I kind of wish Moxie had been given the curly hair treatment and two what is up with the carbon copy of the parents. I've said this numerous times before but when Crimson came on screen I was like oh here we go again. Though the fact he was voiced by Moxie's VA should have been a tip off. Uh, anyway, I'm very tired of every character we meet's parents looking identical to them. And I'm talking scary identical, not, oh, you look like your mom because you have the same eye shape. No, I mean twin level, like you have zero features from the other parent. I mean, obviously Moxie's freckles come from his mom in a weird way, but like he is identical to his dad in so many ways. You know, I just wish there was more variety. But anyway, Moxie's character. <clears throat> Where to start? Uh, I guess he's all right. I mean, season one, he was a little all over the place, like his morals about killing a family, fine. If they had expanded on that part of him, I think it would have been fine instead of a few episodes later showing us him killing all over the place in Spring Broken. I mean, where's your morals now? I know these random people are at the beach with no kids, but I mean, some of them could have been parents or have families. Like, it's weird, he has no problem with it now. The back and forth is just confusing and like, I get Moxie is the Fluttershy of the group, but maybe he could learn different lessons from everyone he works with besides Blitz. I mean, Blitz has a warped view of killing people. Millie does it because it's fun. And Luna, well, it's kind of an aggression thing slash more instinct. It, But like, it could have been cool to see Moxie learn about his peers' morals and values and assess his instead of being the jealous and obnoxious person he becomes. Like the Striker episode was the best version of Moxie being jealous, but honestly, I feel it's should have gone to Millie. Millie is probably Blitz's favorite employee and for Blitz to hire Stryker and her not being able to play in the games would have been a fun scenario to see play out and then like have the double cross and all that stuff. But uh, but yeah, Unhappy Campers kind of killed Moxie as a character for me personally. Obviously it's different for everybody else, but like him trying to be in charge could have been fun if Millie was always in charge of missions without Blitz. And it's more centered around him being like, oh, I can prove I'm able to do this. Instead, we got, how can I make everything about me and get jealous of my wife? Cause teenagers like her more than me. Like, is Moxie not aware people don't really like him? Like he's not a typical imp and he's kind of pompous and fancy and it makes sense. Tell society or, or specifically imp society doesn't vibe with him and kind of why the teens didn't respond the way he 
hoped, but that whole episode was honestly a mess. And Crimson, well, Moxie was kind of his usual quiet self, but that episode, though pretty well written, kind of made Moxie's whole character make not much sense. I mean, Moxie's dad killed his mom very young, and he grew up without her getting in the way of what Crimson wanted him to do. And I feel his personality and view of the world would be much different than what we have now. Like the paranoia would still be fine since he ran away and had to have known his dad would be looking for him. So that makes some sense, but maybe I'm overthinking stuff again. So let's get into this reimagine slash redesign is so long. <laughs> Okay, before we get into Moxie's outfit, I'm gonna explain why Moxie is this way now. So just like Blitz, Moxie is a mixed child of a Greed Imp and a Wrath Imp. And like I said in my Blitz video, I wanted to make Greed Evolution Imps different looking. Uh, this is kind of part of the rewrite, so spoilers everywhere. Uh, so Moxie's body is more dragon based. I know you all assumed dinosaur like what the show has, but I don't really understand what dinosaurs have to do with Greed. Again, I feel the citizens of the Greed Ring are are just jokes disguised as world building like loan sharks, dinosaurs, aka fossil fuels, and the mafia. Not sure what the joke is, but the mafia makes no sense, or the jester theming, or the circus theming going on specifically in Greed. I understand that every single ring is circus themed, but again, not every ring is sticking to a theme. So it's a little weird and a little off that there's so much going on in the Greed ring theme wise, as well as Maman looking like a jester when, when he's technically a prince, so whatever. Also, last Last time I checked, circuses and clowns slash jesters don't make that much money anymore. Unless like for horror franchises, that would have been cool. Uh, but anyway, yeah, I based the greed imps around Dragon, the fantasy world's number one greediest creature. So Moxie's skin is to reflect that. His dark complexion is to protect him while his underbelly is soft. Unlike a typical wrath imp where the black markings are immune to all kinds of damage, the greed imp's body is mostly to keep them safe from falling rocks, which leads into my next thing. So, so Blitz has unusually large hands and claws, which his dad has along with Barbie. And I really liked the idea of greed imps all having this hand style as it's pretty much great for digging. However, due to Moxie being a mixed child, has wrath type arms, but has spikes on his arms to make up for it. The spikes are usually on the back and the tail of a greed imp in case they fall. Again, hinting to why Moxie now has spines on his tail. And you're probably wondering why I keep bringing up digging. So in the rewrite, I had put greed on top of envy, which means Greed's dirt is the perfect place to dig up gemstones. Obviously, some are cursed due to the water from Envy, but they're pretty and shiny, and it's not really that hard to see a hardworking Wrath Imp evolve into a hardworking gem finder. Also, both Moxie and Blitz's spines hint to what they're good at finding. Moxie can find gold and tell if it's real, along with being able to tell what's angelic gold. Blitz can find black onyx, which isn't super impressive within the Greed culture. However, the gemstones still do make money. However, it's not enough money, and considering how greedy everybody is in greed. It's not worth anybody's time to try and dig those up. Uh, but anyway, gold colored greed imps are extremely high ranked in greed society, but oftentimes exploited. Nearly every greed imp has a shiny mindset and will take things. To combat this, they are allowed one gem to take home from the mines. However, Moxie's shiny mindset isn't as all-consuming as his father's, but he does like the finer things, hints to the gold bands on his tail. And speaking of his tail, greed imps have flat white tails that act as shovels, and their feet don't have hooves but claws, again to keep them sturdy and not fall while digging. And the snoot. I see you all staring. I really wanted Moxie to scream dragon, and just adding a few things wasn't going to cut it, so yeah, I gave him a snoot. I mean, his face shape is pretty perfect for it. I know they keep changing where his mouth is because sometimes it's similar to Blitz's, but his skull is pretty well built. So yeah, Greed Imps have snoots now. Also due to Moxie being mixed, his skin tone is now more orange as I wanted Greed Imps to have a more yellowish red tone. Also Moxie though favoring his dad more is still a complicated mix. Like if he were to move to Wrath, it would be 100% obvious that he is not a full-blooded Wrath citizen. And if he were to go back to Greed, again, the same thing would happen due to the fact that the evolutioned Greed Imps are to recognize that Moxie is not 100% like them. I also think it could have played better when Moxie meets Millie's parents, you know, like the whole where he says, I was born here too. And then they laugh at his face. And because in my mind at the time, we didn't know that he was also half greed citizen. We just assumed like he lived in a cityer version of Wrath, but we have yet to see the cityer version of Wrath. So I still don't 100% know. And you know, it's just weird. It's so weird. The world building is so weird. 
Also, I'd love to go into super full detail on the rewrite and Moxie and Crimson's lore, but but one, it's still somewhat in development because that's a season two situation and two, because, you know, spoilers. Also, if you're wondering about the legs, both Greed Imps and Wrath Imps share the same leg shape, but there are others that are different. That's why Blitz has long non goatish legs since his mother is a full succubus. Anyway, the outfit and colors. Okay, for Moxie's outfit, I wasn't actually going to change all that much, but then I remembered his arms now have spines and, well, yeah, the jacket wasn't going to work. So I made it into a vest with small coattails, a little less obvious hint to his love of music, made his undershirt collar the same color as his shirt. I also made the shirt a little more yellowish white to honestly tone down the harshness of the white because, like, white is devoid of all color and is extremely bright no matter what color you mix in with it. It'll just make the color brighter. So pure white white is just pure brightness so yeah i added some yellow to help combat that uh i did keep his bow tie i know a few people wanted more hints to his mother but i think the bow tie is a nice touch i'm a sucker for hidden details and moxie's mom's shoes and ribbons are a nice perfect balance of hidden details and to make sure he matched with everyone including blitz i gave him blitz's og buttons and gave him an imp button to show how less interested in this job he is like if you look at everyone they all have something a bit more noticeable yes i know you can't see blitzes it's on the back of his jacket but compared to moxie his way of showing off the company is smaller than the others it's a kind of weird way to show he's not super into it like they all are considering the fact that buttons are a more cheaper alternative to like logo imagery because a belt buckle is pretty expensive uh having it pr having it printed on the back of a jacket not super expensive, but you have to buy more than one. And Luna has more of a dog tag, but the fact that it's custom made to be the IMP logo is also pretty expensive. So it's like what Moxie picked kind of reflects how he feels about the job. Obviously he's good at what he does, but like the whole killing innocent people part is a little not up his ballpark. Um, and his pants are just simple black pants. Again, my main goal was to give him shoes. I'm not 100% satisfied with what I did and I may try something different. I'm just not sure what right now. So he's just wearing simple slip boots with a similar top to redesign Blitz's shoes. Now the colors, I already said why Moxie is more orange, but if you notice, I also made his hair and his horn color a little bit more yellowish. I think the red, white, and black color scheme is perfect for Wrath Imps, but I think the colors for other Evolution Imps could be a different hue. So like, why couldn't Greed Imps have more whitish, yellowish hair and horns? Or Envy Imps with whitish green? I mean, the lighting already kind of does that. Again, I've said this before, but if you shine a colored light on white, it will look like that color. Big reason I wasn't on board for Lucifer's all white suit. But yeah, I think it could be fun for the white parts of Imps being colored hue like specifically just for the evolutions and then the occasional mix because obviously mixing is another form of evolution but I really hope I'm making some sense here it's so hard to explain this <laughs> <laughs> this is so hard to explain when I can when it's just easier to show, you know. Uh, also made his eyebrows yellowish white. I'm not sure if I'm super on board with this look. Like the only reason I did it is because I noticed a lot more cartoons have been kind of lacking in the eyebrow game. I know it's easier just to make them black, but sometimes it's kind of off-putting on certain characters. Uh, but anyway, Moxie still has his freckles, and later you'll see I went back and made them more toned to his skin because freckles are more of like little tiny sunburns is the best way I can explain it but they're not burns exactly or wounds so it's kind of weird that the world building puts them in that category again I'm pretty sure it's just because it's easier but but I'm not the type of person that likes easy so <laughs> plus I mean they could have just made them black after the pilot I could have bought that but yeah Moxie's freckles are colored more to match his skin also I'm sure you're all super surprised but yes I did keep Moxie's gloves I didn't see much of a reason not to there are gloves for holding guns and and fingerless gloves are cool and also because depending on the gun you really want your finger free also I gave Moxie a ring Millie has one too you just can't really see it because of the pose that I did uh but I kind of wished it was more obvious they were married because in the pilot I had no idea till someone made a things you missed in hell of a boss so yeah wedding rings <laughs> I am gonna talk a little bit about Millie and Moxie because you know, they're not as bad as Stolas and Blitz in my mind, in my opinion, but I would like to talk about them a little bit because some, some of the things that they do and some of the things they say kind of bug me a little bit, a little bit, you know, because they are considered the perfect couple that everyone should emulate or at least inspire to be like, and I'm just like, eh, we'll see. 
<laughs> Moxie and Millie's relationship to me is kind of flat. Like, I get they're super in love. They're in their honeymoon phase of marriage, but it'd be nice to see them separate some. Nearly every B-plot is them doing something together, kinda. I mean, most of the time it's something Moxie's doing and Millie is trying to fix it, and I feel Unhappy Campers could have been that fun turnaround where, where maybe the episode is way more laser focused on Millie. I mean, as much as everyone keeps saying that episode was about Millie, it really wasn't. Plus, their argument was weird to me. Like, Moxie never really seemed the type to get upset that people didn't fawn over him, and is way more the type of like, my wife's happiness is my happiness kind of mindset, you know? Plus, as much fun as it was to see Millie do stuff and get attention, it didn't really give anything to her character. And also, her side of the argument was kind of weird. I feel if we had gotten a bit more hints to Millie feeling this way in the Striker episode, then it wouldn't have felt like it came from nowhere. Because I don't think Moxie ever really said anything about Millie just being good at fighting. I mean, maybe Blitz. There's a few lines, but yeah, there wasn't much buildup for this argument that they're having. And as much as I wanted it to happen, it didn't give as much as it could have, you know? And I know we have Millie and Luna-centered episodes coming up, but at this point, I don't see much of the story working if they're just gonna keep ignoring a lot of the buildup. Like, buildup is important in storytelling in general, even with character development as well. It's pretty much the guidelines of, like, how your story should be told and how your character's development should be told. Uh, I remember in school, it's described as, like, a roller coaster where you start at the bottom and your character is working, 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 working their way to the top, and then all that buildup, all that momentum finally reaches its peak, and you slide down into home base, which is the finish line of the story or the character's development or arc, and it's just like, you know, all that buildup really made getting to the finish line that much more fun and that much more enjoyable. So when you completely ignore that, then there's nothing to really enjoy, there's nothing to really um, feel that the characters have earned this, or feel that they have felt these feelings, you know what I mean? Like, I'm really hoping I'm making sense. <laughs> Because the whole point is, like, it's impactful in some way, you know? Uh, but anyway, that's all I really got for them. I would like to go into more detail about it, but that's gonna be, like, for the rewrite in general. But they're not as bad as I think Stolas and Blitz are. But I do wish there was more going on. I'm not saying I want drama or angst or for them to break up. You know, I just want something different for them to do or, you know, be separate for a bit. So we can see what their dynamic is with the rest of the cast, you know? Like, I'm really tired of the Eminem crew. I, it's cute, it was fine in the beginning, but now I'm like, I really like to see Millie and Blitz or Millie, more Millie and Luna. Like, we didn't really get much in the dorks episode. Like, as cool as it was for them to talk and hang out, I kind of want a little bit more. You know, I just want more. I just want more different different team ups, I guess. Because, like, at this point, Blitz is pretty much on his own because Luna just... Luna's just on the sidelines. <laughs> She's doing whatever. Uh, anyway, this was so much fun. I loved working on Moxie. I, I know it's a lot along with like the AU lore being included, but I couldn't help myself. Uh, but anyway, next video will probably be Ballora since Sister Location won the vote for what franchise I should work on next, which honestly I should have seen coming, but I'm excited. This will be a whole new ballpark for me. Uh, but anyway, remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe. It really helps out the channel and me. I hope you all have a super fantastic day, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye! <laughs>